Good morning, CCM. This morning's good morning CCM scripture is Matthew 5 and 9. And it reads, 
Blessed are the peacekeepers, for they will be children of God. Announcements, announcements, please join us every Thursday night for Bible study via Zoom. This uh, month, we are studying the book of Ruth, Ruth and uh, this week we will be in chapter two. That's the book of Ruth, chapter two. And you can join us every Sunday for Sunday uh, service here on Zoom and live via Facebook uh, at 11.30 a.m. Remember, to, if you'd like to join, to comment, hashtag connect at CCM, or if you have prayer requests, to please email us at CompassionateChurchMinistries at gmail.com. Good news. Autism Peace Walk was a great success. Thanks to all of you for your support. Yesterday, collectively, Compassionate Church Ministries and hashtag Team Alana donated $1,075 to Autism Peace Walk here in Oklahoma City. Yay, Team Atlanta. Those funds will go to help children and families um, uh, uh, who are impacted by autism uh, to participate in services and activities, uh, any, everything from support groups to day trip outings to respite for families. Um, that hits home here at CCM for us. And so we so appreciate all of your support. Remember, what you give lives at CCM. To give to Compassionate Church Ministries, you can cash app CCM213 or give to CCM on Tidely. Now I'll put you back in the hands of Sister Rebecca.
doesn't go my way. I know that it is not the end. I'm trusting you a better plan. I haven't even dreamt of you. I know that you are for me when everything's against me.
Praise God. Though the billers may roll, the breakers may dash, but I shall not sway because my savior holds me fast. So dark today, clouds in the sky, but it's all right because Jesus is mine. My soul is anchored this morning, saints. My soul is anchored in the Lord. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace be unto you. The blessings of God be unto you. Grace and mercy be unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed to be with you once again on yet another Sunday morning. Uh, let's not take that for granted. Not everybody woke up on this day. Uh, but if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, then that means you did. And God's blessings uh, be upon you. We have been in a series uh, over the past couple of weeks where we've been studying uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, uh, verses 10 to 18, pretty much. We've been studying the armor of God. So very important to have for the Christian soldier to have on the full armor of God in this spiritual war that we are in. Of course, we know how the war ends. Uh, we know that in the end, God wins. Uh, but throughout the process, we have these battles that we fight on a daily basis. And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna just win the war. I wanna win all of the spiritual battles too. Can I get a witness? And I'm so grateful to the Lord that he gives us these tools. He gives us these weapons for spiritual warfare. Week one, we talked about how some of us are spiritually sagging. Why? Because we haven't messed up the belt of truth. Uh, we preach the truth of Jesus Christ. We live by the truth of Jesus Christ. Last week, we talked about having the breastplate of righteousness. And it's not a self-righteousness that I'm talking about. If, if all of us were left to our own righteousness, we, 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 we would be in trouble. Because it's not enough to keep us standing firm in this battle. But when we put on the righteousness of Christ... When we accept him as Lord, we have a breastplate that the enemy's darts can never penetrate by hearing amen out there in Cyberland. And today, to my brothers and sisters, today I want to talk to you about, wait for it, wait for it, feet. <laughs> yes. Today, I want to talk to you about feet. Some of us have crusty feet. Can I get some help today? <laughs> some of us have ashy feet. Some of us have uh, feet that are pedicured. Praise God. Some of us have actually put some lotion on those dogs. Can I get some help today? Some of us need to work on toenails. Glory to God. But I don't know about, but my goal, my goal in this spiritual walk, my goal in this spiritual battle is to have beautiful feet. Yes, my brothers, I want to have beautiful feet. Amen. Amen, Mrs. Anderson. Help us with the crusty feet, Lord Jesus. Some of us in this spiritual battle, that's actually what we have. We have crusty feet. But can I tell you this morning that when we put on the full armor of God, we have beautiful spiritual feet. Isaiah 52 and 7 says this. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. 
See, I thought I was just cutting up. I mean it. I want to have beautiful spiritual feet proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And so that's what we're studying today, my brothers and sisters. We're going to look at the, the sandals of the gospel of peace as the armor of God. Feet fitted with the readiness that can only come from the gospel of peace. I'm going to ask you to bear with me. I'm going to do a bit of a combination here. Uh, we're we're going to stay, of course, in our primary text, Ephesians uh, chapter 6. We have also been studying the book of Ruth on uh, Thursday nights. And I actually uh, uh, want to find here uh, Ruth chapter 1, as well as our message on armor of God today. So y'all bear with me uh, as I combine these texts, because I believe Ruth chapter 1 speaks to us a lot about how to have on the sandals of the gospel of peace fitted on our feet and making sense to you. If not yet, praise God, glory to God, I will in a minute. So take a look at our scripture, Ephesians 6, 10 to 15. Ephesians 6, 10 to 15, this is what it says. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual force of evil in the heavenly realms. Verse 13, therefore, put on the full armor of God. All of it, saints, not just pieces of it, all of it. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you on today. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. Lord, we thank you for this gospel of peace, which can even bring us peace in the midst of, of chaos, which which unites us in Christ, which, which gives us hope, even in the midst of a world that is, all, that is not often kind to us, that is not often loving. Lord God, we just ask that you would teach us more about the gospel of peace today, how to lace those sandals up so that we can stand firm in the Lord in each and every one of our spiritual battles. Lord God, we ask that you would bless those who are mourning today, uh, bless those who are in bereavement, bless those uh, who are sick. Lord, bless those who are dealing with financial struggles. Lord, bless those who are dealing with anxious and depressed thoughts. But Lord God, we know that you are a way maker. You are able. And it begins with prayer. What a blessing it is to pray to God, the only God who is not only able to meet us at his request that is willing. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, we gotta have the belt of truth buckled around our waist. We gotta have the breastplate of righteousness protecting our chest. We gotta have our feet prepared with the gospel of peace. I, I want you to think about uh, uh, the Roman soldier and, and his sandals. If he's going out to war, he needs a good pair of sandals. Why? So that he can stand firm, so that he can hold his ground against his enemy, so that he can push forward when he needs to, so that he can dig in and not be knocked over. 
can I tell you this morning, we need the sandals of the gospel of peace so that none of those things happen to us in our spiritual battles. And, and, and I'm trusting God this morning that he, he's going to show us how Ruth actually had on these sandals. Now, y'all bear with me. I know you may say Ruth is an Old Testament uh, uh, passage. We're talking about the gospel of peace. But bear with me. I, I believe God is going to communicate about how Ruth is an example of how we, too, can put on these sandals in the midst of our spiritual battles. So I'm going to ask that you bear with me as I read Ruth chapter one, and I'm going to read all the way to verse 18. Ruth chapter one, verse one to 18. And this is what it says. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah together with his wife and two sons went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Verse three, now Limelech, Naomi's husband died and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Kilion also died and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Verse six, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people, by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Verse 12, return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Verse 14, at this, they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. Verse 16, but Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severe, even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. May God add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. The title of today's message for anyone taking notes is Ruth had on the sandals. Amen. Ruth had on the sandals. Ruth, according to the scripture, we, we can tell that Ruth had some beautiful spiritual feet. Can I get a witness today? And that's what I believe God wants for all of us. Point number one is this. Point number one is this. The sandals Help me to bring peace in the midst of the chaos. The sandals 
can help me to bring peace in the midst of the chaos. Remember, chaos and confusion, those are tools of the enemy. Gotta be prepared with the sandals of peace, with the gospel of peace, if you're going to win every battle against your enemy. These sandals can bring peace in the midst of the chaos. I, I think about several years ago, probably more so be before the time of Amazon and everybody, uh, all young people, even old people, uh, I wanted the Jordan shoes. Of course, now you can just order them and, and they'll come to your home. But, but do you all remember those days when the new Jordan shoes would come out and people would be waiting in line all night, overnight, just to get the shoes. And, and in the midst of that, they'd be hitting people upside the head to get a better place in line. Come on, somebody, you know I'm telling the truth. They'd be cutting people, they'd be robbing, they'd be cheating, they, they'd be stealing. There were, there were incidences where, where people really got hurt over some shoes. What I'm saying is there was chaos just trying to get Michael Jordan shoes. Can I tell you that, that, that as Christians, as warriors in Christ, uh, Christian art, we ought to be where the, the, the shoe of the gospel of peace, the, the sandals of the gospel of peace, should seek shoes that bring peace, not chaos. And Ruth possesses these shoes. Ephesians 6.15 says this. Let's look at it once again. It says, and with your feet fitted with the readiness comes from the gospel peace. If you're a child of God, if you are in, uh, 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 in Jesus's uh, Christian army, you got to be, your feet need to be with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In this chaotic time, Ruth's feet were fitted with the readiness. Let's go back to the text again, Ruth 1, 1 to 2. I want to read it again for you. It says this, don't miss this very first line. It says, in the days when the judges ruled. Don't forget that. There was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah together with his wife and two sons went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Melon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. This is taking place in the days when the judges ruled. Now I want to show you something from the book of Judges, chapter 21, verse 25. Watch this. This is what it says about the time of the judges rule. It's very important to know in this story so we can just see the type of peace that Ruth brings to the situation. Judges 21, 25 says this, in those days... There was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. I want to repeat that. I know this is redundant for those who have been uh, attending midweek, uh, but for those who have heard this before, again, it says everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Translation, chaos. That's what that means. That was chaos. Nobody was governed. Uh, nobody had the morals that God would want them to have. And in a situation where Ruth is in, where we have not, not one widow, not two widow, but three, Ruth has these sandals of peace on, and she brings about peace in the midst of a chaotic situation just by the loving kindness that she shows her mother-in-law. Am I making sense to anybody this morning? Ruth had on the sandals. When we look at Ruth's father-in-law, his name was Elimelech. I said this midweek, I'll say it again. The name Elimelech is translated as my God is king. Some translations might even say my God is kind. I would suggest that they're both right. My God is king and my God 
is kind, but I want you to consider something. Every time Ruth, who was a foreigner, who, who was a mobile, who, who, who we would not expect to understand or know anything about this God, about these sandals, or about the peace of God, but yet every time she hears her father-in-law Limelech's name being called, she learns about this God that Naomi and her people serve. She learns about this powerful God who uh, delivered his people from the most powerful uh, army in the world at the time, the Egyptians. She, she learns about the God who, uh, when uh, his people had the Red Sea in front of them and had chari uh, Pharaoh in his chariots behind him, she learns about the God who parted the Red Sea so that his people could make it through and the sea ends up swallowing Pharaoh and his chariots behind them. What I'm saying to you is Ruth already has heard enough about this God who can make a way out of no way, that she can already bring peace to a situation of chaos. My brothers and sisters, in your families, in your homes, keep talking about God. You never know who it may be impacting. In your relationships, Keep talking about the gospel. You never know who it may be bringing to Christ. Keep talking about the Prince of Peace and how he can give you peace even in the midst of chaos. You never know. There might be some foreigner in your midst who is being encouraged and can eventually give their life over to him as well. Put on the sandals. Put on the sandals today, bring peace in the midst of the chaos. Matthew 5, 9 says this, blessed are the peacemakers. That's right, blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. God wants you to be about peace. Can I help somebody today? A lot of us, uh, it, it just seems wherever we go, chaos follows us. Uh, and, and that's not just because chaos wants to follow us. There's something about us that's breeding chaos. Remember, you're in a war. Be about peace so you can stand firm. Look at the impact it had on Ruth. Imagine the impact it could have on those in your environment if you make up your mind to put on these sandals and be about the gospel of peace. But how do we do it, Brother Lance? How do, we, how do we be about peace? How do we speak peace? How do we live peace in the midst of chaos? Well, thank God, I think I actually have an answer for you. Isaiah 26, three says this. Isaiah 26, three says this. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Can I tell you this morning that if you want to have peace, and not only peace, but perfect peace, put your mind on Christ today. Put your mind on God today. Put your mind on the things of God today. And don't just put it there. Keep it there. Allow it to stay there. Put your trust in God. And that's what we see Ruth doing this story. Uh, at the end of our reading, we, we, we notice uh, that she put some trust even in this God who she had just recently become familiar with when she entered this family. We too can have that peace when our mind is stayed on the Lord. Ruth stays calm in this situation, as chaotic as, chaotic as it is. She's heard enough about this God. She's received some peace. Can we do that for the Lord? when we are in the midst of chaos. Philippians 4, 7, just a reminder. It never gets old, just a reminder. But if we're gonna talk about peace, we can't leave this out. Verse seven says, in the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding. That's the type of peace that I want to have, my brothers and sisters. That's the type of peace that God desires. 
all of us to have that, that, that when I'm in the midst of chaos and people notice, hey, Lance is in the midst of, of chaos. How is he so calm? I, I don't understand how he can have so much peace with all this chaos going on around him. But think about it, that's exactly what the text says and the peace of God, which transcends our understanding. Uh, of course, if you didn't know about my God, you couldn't understand why I can have peace in the midst of the chaos. That's the type of peace I wanna have. Can I get a witness today? You want that type of peace that transcends understanding. God, I don't even need to understand why I have the peace. I just want to keep my mind on you so that I can receive it. I'm trying to help somebody today. There's peace in Jesus Christ. There's peace in the gospel of peace. Put on those sandals. This peace I have, Brother Patterson, this peace I have, the world can get, which means this peace I have, the world can't take it away. That this peace I have, it was given to me by the Prince of Peace. That this peace I have, it was given to me from the one who, when my thoughts are on him, he can keep in peace. That this peace I have comes from the one who can give me some peace that surpasses all understanding. That this peace I have comes from the one who can say to the storm, peace, be still in the storm stops raging and sometimes he allows the storm to keep raging but he gives me peace anyway in the midst of the storm can i get a witness today that this peace i have comes from the one who greets his family who greets his who, who greets his followers with the term peace done to you I, we need to remember that today when, when there's trouble in my family i can remember that jesus told me Peace be unto you, Lance. When I'm having those anxious thoughts, I can remember that Jesus told me, peace be unto you, Lance. When the enemy and his minions are trying to work on me, I can remember that Christ told me, peace be unto you. Put the shoes on. Put the sandals on, my brothers and sisters. Take on the peace of God. Strap those sandals on, lace them up, dig in and stand firm. I'm simply saying that the sandals of the gospel can bring me peace in the midst of this war. Let the gospel of peace reign in your life, even in the midst of chaos. Oh, how beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim the gospel of peace. Point number two. Ruth brings peace to a chaotic situation. This is something else we learned from Ruth here. The sandals, point number two, the sandals help us to have church. That's right. The sandals help us to have church. Amen, Sister, Sister Anderson, amen. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, why? because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Set your hearts and minds on the Prince of Peace. We'll receive peace. This, the sandals can help us to have church. You know, especially uh, over the past 15 or 16 months here, we, we've heard a lot of discussion. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, use, we'll, we'll, we'll use the term, you know, we have been able to go to church or because of the pandemic, we, we haven't been able to have church. We haven't been able to visit church. Uh, can I tell you today that it, uh, that's not an accurate understanding, that that's not even an accurate way to talk about it because the church is in a building. Hello, somebody. Hello, lights. Hello, skies. <laughs> Hello, hello video. I know somebody is out there listening. The church is not a building. It's not a place we go, but, but, but it's something that we be. 
You are the church, which means wherever you, you take the church with you. And Ruth is out here in the middle of this chaotic situation. She's a widow with two other widows. And trust me, back then to be a widow, especially without a son uh, who, who can take care of you, Naomi, uh, was basically a death sentence or a sentence to poverty. But Ruth says, nah, Naomi, we, we, we gonna have church. I, I'm gonna be here for you. I am linked to you. I, I am connected with you. We, we don't have to have a building to have church. We can have church right where we're at. And how do we do that? By how I treat you, by how I love you, by how I take on your burden alongside of you. And that's what Ruth does here. She takes on Naomi's burden in a powerful way. Just imagine if our churches were filled with people who did that. Amen. And again, those are church buildings, not the actual church. Uh, Jesus told Peter, and on this rock, I'll build my church. You are a direct descendant of Peter in terms of being a disciple of Christ. He wants to build his church on you. Be the church, my brothers and sisters. Be the church. Ruth brings about peace to the situation. And this gospel of peace, can I tell you, uh, it's also about unity. This gospel of peace is also about unity. It, it's also about the absence of worry. Come on, somebody. You, you, you worry about this. You worry about that. Lace up those sandals or, or be peace for somebody else to help them lace theirs up. This gospel of peace is also about a, 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 a sense of, 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 of managing the conflict amongst Christians. I'm telling you, the symbols help us to have church. Let's go back to the text, Ruth 1, 6 to 14. Ruth 1, 6 to 14 says this, when Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would, have, that, that would take them back the land of Judah. Verse eight, then Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye and they wept aloud. Listen, uh, 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 just hold the slide right there for a second, please, Sister Ray. What, what, what's, what's, what's happening right here, we don't see a lot of action, brothers and sisters, but we do see a lot of dialogue. A, another way that I'll refer to what's happening here is, this is church. Can I get some help today that they're having church right here? Amen. They, they, they want to hang out. They, they, they don't want to abandon their mother-in-law. They want to be there with her. And at the same time, he's saying, hey, I, I want you to have an abundant life. Go find another husband. You, you, you should go live on. You don't have to cling to me. They're having church right here. Sharing burdens, sharing concerns. Can we in the church, can we put on sandals of peace that we will support and care for one another? Amen, somebody. Maybe you tuned in today hoping that, that, that I would just preach something about what God can do for you. No, I want to talk about what we can do for God as his church, as his people, how we can love one another. How we can comfort one another, how we can share birth, how we can put on sandals like Ruth does here. Verse 10. Verse 10 says this and said, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth 
to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Verse 14, at this they wept again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but both clung to her. That's church. Can I tell you today, that's church. God is very pleased with what Ruth is doing in this situation. We need more Christians clean another in time of need. And, 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 it, and think about this, considering you know, this is the time when the judges rule, uh, which means there ain't no ruler, which means there's chaos, which means people do what they want to in their own eyes. They, they would have saw these three widows along the path and they would have just walked by them or they might have tried to rob them or do something even worse. And yet we have God's people shining their light by cleaning, clean, clinging to one another, by being lights in the darkness. That's what God desires for all of us. This little light of mine. Hello, somebody. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine by putting these sandals on and being about the gospel of peace. Because the devil and his, and his friends... Man, they would have looked, they're already working on Naomi, right? She's talking about how bitter they are. They're already working on her. Man, just think about how many people you can bless and how pleasing to God you can be when you bring about peace and are willing to have church with somebody in that type of situation. Ruth brings the peace of godliness here. We can too. She brings the unity that comes from the gospel of peace. We can too. She brings peace instead of a sense of conflict. We can too. She brings an absence of worry in the midst of chaos. We can too. God wants to use us as a church in this same way that he's using Ruth in this situation. Uh, and again, we, you know, I highlight the fact that this is during the time of the judges when everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Can I tell you that we live in the time of the judges day? Can I get some help? And it's okay if you don't wanna believe me, I got plenty of evidence. Look at what happened on January 6th. People doing what's right in their own eyes. Look at all this uh, mysteriousness and clouds of, of darkness surrounding elections, whether it's fraud or about who really won. Look, look, look at all these mass shootings that are taking place. Look at all this discrimination that's taking place. We live in the time of the judges where people are doing what's right in their own eyes, but God is looking for a saint. God is looking for a disciple. God is looking for one of his children to be like Ruth and have church even in the midst of the chaos. Romans 12, five says it like this. Romans 12, five says it like this. If I'm preaching to you this morning, type in amen. Let me know that you listen. Let the Holy Spirit know that you listen. Romans 12, five says this. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others. Oh my goodness. I know there are a lot of y'all though that don't part that text. You belong to somebody else. Not just God, but you also belong to the body of Christ. Share one another's burdens. Have church in the midst of chaos. Belong to one another in a way that pleases God. First Thessalonians 5. 13 to 19, says this, hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work, live in peace with each other. We urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are disrupted, encourage the disheartened, 
help the weak. Be patient with everyone. I put that in bold right there because some of us, we have a huge problem with being patient with everyone. Can I help somebody, somebody today? You have a huge problem with being patient with folk. Come on. You are, all I got is a Republican or Democrat and immediately you lose patience. <laughs> all I got to do is say President Trump or President Biden immediately. You lose patience. Amen. All I got to do is talk about something that you don't like or somebody that you disagree with, and immediately you lose. Pay I know I'm the only one. That's okay. I'm going to be honest about it so God can work on me. I, I encourage you to do the same. Be patient with everyone. Have church. Be about peace. Verse 15. Verse 15. This is another thing we do that's not, that's, that's not about church. It says, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Can I tell you today that Ruth does the exact opposite here? She clings to her mother-in-law. She, she, she's not interested in piling up wrong. Amen. I know she wasn't wronged here, but, but many of us, once we feel wrong, I'll holler at you. See you later. Goodbye. We're leaving the relationship, amen. We will leave the body of believers because we feel we want to pay back wrong for wrong. But God is saying, have church, put on these sandals of peace, put on these sandals of the gospel, strive to do what is good for each other. That's what Ruth is doing here. Verse 16 goes on to say, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in a few circumstances. <laughs> no, that's not what it says. It says, give, give, give thanks sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I guess I'm not just reading it right. Let me, let me try one more time. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Can I tell you, it, it saddens the Holy Spirit. It, it saddens God's heart when, we're, when we don't have church with one another, when we uh, pay back wrong for wrong, when we're impatient. Can we put on the sandals and have church today? That's all I'm asking you, saints. Can we put on sandals uh, of peace, of the gospel, and have church today? And not only today, but every day. John 13, 34 to 35. Just another reminder says this, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. You love one another. Another way we could say that is, one will know you're happy church. If you love one another, can I get some help today? Everyone will know you're happy If you're sharing burdens, everyone will know you're happy church. If you're bringing about peace in the midst of chaos, this isn't Smith talking. Amen. This straight from our Lord. I see you, Mother Gary. Yes, we can. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm simply saying that these sandals, these sandals of the gospel of peace, they help us to bring about unity. They help us to bring about the peace of God in all situations. Can I help somebody today in a relationship where you're so frustrated because you can't get somebody to do and be how you want them to be? Can, can I encourage you just be about peace? Just be about peace in that relationship and watch what it begins to do. I trust him. I trust him today. What about you? Number three. Point number three. These sandals help us to be right with God. These sandals help us to be right. With God. You, you gotta have these sandals on. If you wanna be right with the Lord. Romans 1, 16 says this. 
powerful text says this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. The sandals of the gospel of peace help us to be right with God. The power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. To the Democrat who believes, to the Republican who believes, to the black or white who believes, to the brown or yellow who believes, to the American who believes, to the Mexican who believes. We put on these sandals of the gospel of peace to be right with God, to receive that salvation. This, this gospel of peace is the good news that Jesus Christ died for me. It never gets old. That's the gospel of peace that, that I'm redeemed, that he bought me back to himself, that, that I'm delivered, that I'm no longer a slave king, that I'm no longer doomed and bound for hell, that I'm saved. How could that not bring you peace? No matter how much chaos is going on, I can put on these sandals because this gospel is the power of God. It brings salvation to everyone who believes. I, I've been made right with God. I'm no longer an enemy of God due to my sin. In fact, I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of this grace. When I think about that, why would I want to have chaos with anybody? Y'all be as chaotic as you want. I'm going to keep lacing up these sandals. Every time I see the chaos heading my way, anybody agree with me this morning? Ruth 1, let's go back to it. Ruth 1, 15 to 18. Ruth, Ruth puts on these sandals. Ruth is made right with God. Verse 15 says this. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Her people will be my people and your God, my God. I love that. Ruth says, look, this, this guy I've been hearing about, I, I, I want a part of him too. I want a part of God too. He's going to be my God as well. Maybe there's somebody out in Cyberland. You haven't made that decision. Just like Ruth, you can make that decision today for this God that I'm preaching about, for this God who I'm uplifting today, that he can be your God too, just the same. I, the other thing I love about Ruth is that she is God's ambassador right here. She is his messenger, especially here in verse 16, don't urge me to leave you or turn back. Do I, I love that that, that that is the theology of about God. That's how he works. He doesn't leave me. He doesn't turn back from me. He, he doesn't forsake me. Wherever I go, he goes. I, all I do is look behind me and I see the twins, goodness and mercy, following me all the days of my life. Put the sandals on, my brothers and sisters. Put the sandals on. Verse 17, where you, she goes on to say, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, even if death, death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Ruth says, may the Lord deal with me. She, she's expecting uh, she's even accepting God's admonishment. Glory to God. She's put on the sandals. What about you? Are you going to do a better job at lacing up your sandals? 
God loves it when his children stick it out with each other because that's what he does for us. It's our best version of ourselves when we bring about peace to a situation and we lift up the name of the Lord. Although Ruth is somewhere along the way, she recognizes that she can put her trust in this God and in his people. Ruth has on the sandals. Ephesians 6 and 15 reminds us once again that our feet need to fit it with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Ruth was ready. Amen. She was ready to bring peace instead of chaos. She was ready to bring church uh, when they were in the midst of and bereavement and confusion. She was ready to sell out for Naomi's people and name God. Think about it. She could have went back like Orpah, but she stayed. She could have went back to her old God but she took on the God of heaven as her God. She could have went back to her old ways, back to doing what was right in her own eyes. Hello, somebody. If we want to get it right with God in this spiritual war, we need to do the same. Make the choice, this God that Ruth also trusted, to not go to our old ways, to not choose the route of what's right in our own eyes, but what's right in God's eyes. These sandals help Ruth to decide to return home with Naomi. Maybe today out there in Cyberland, somebody else needs to return home to God today. Someone out there has been walking around spiritually barefoot without the gospel of peace. Spiritual feet aren't looking pretty. Maybe, maybe that's you today. Maybe someone else will return home to a heavenly father who is waiting for you to return. Maybe there are some things in your life that you actually are right with God. But what about that one or that two or those three things that you had him with yet? For a minute, for a minute. What have you trusted God with yet to receive that peace? Will you turn that over to him today as well? Will you lay those sandals up for him today as well? About those things that you keep doing that are right in your own eyes, but yet you know God. Will you put on the sandals of the gospel of peace and will you return to the king today? Come on, Rebecca. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. 
Praise God. He's the God who can break every chain. He's the God that can help us with those feet. And I don't know about y'all, it's about feet all you want, but I know that they have beautiful feet because they're laced sandals of the gospel of peace. What about you? Are you gonna put on those sandals? Or are you gonna allow those sandals to help you bring peace to chaos? Or are you gonna put on those sandals to help you have church with those in need? Are you gonna put on those sandals, the gospel of Jesus Christ to help you with God? That is our prayer here at Compassionate Church. And if there's someone watching someone who hasn't accepted Jesus as Lord, that is our prayer, that you would take a moment, that you would receive this gospel message on the confession of your faith, that your feet would be made ready, and that you too will receive salvation. Or maybe you like me, every now and then you're walking around barefoot. Every now and then you got the wrong type of shoes on our prayer is that God would help you to put on these spiritual shoes so that you can be fitted prepared to stand firm in every spirit battle that you face our benediction this afternoon our benediction this afternoon comes second corinthians 13 and 11 if you're in the Zoom meeting, I'm gonna ask that you unmute just for a moment as we read the benediction together. Second Corinthians 13 and 11, it's on screen. If you're tuning in by phone on the radio, I'll give you a moment if you want to grab your Bible and read it. Second Corinthians 13 and 11, we will be reading the New International Version. Okay, saints, this is what it says. Let's read it together. Verse 11. Finally, Finally brothers and sisters, sisters rejoice. rejoice. Strive for full restoration. restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one, another. Be of be one of mind. mind. Live, live, live in peace. And the God, and the God of, love of love and peace and will be with, with you. you. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you. And God keep you. I love you, saints. God watch Wonderful. over all of us. In his name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Great message, Pastor. Great message.